They say you should never put all your eggs in one basket when it comes to listing and the site you choose to list on. Maybe you should list on multiple sites. Well, the same holds true for sourcing. And of course, I had to come out of my comfort zone to sort of learn that the hard way. So I'm gonna to talk to you about that on the other side. So without any further ado, let's go. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is John from Flippin' Ain't Easy. And first, before I begin, let me just apologize. I haven't been drinking. My eyes are just a little red, bloodshot tonight. Been working really hard on the computer and um, this is kind of the result of that. So um, came out here tonight. You're watching it the next day at least, maybe further down the road, but came out here to make this video because I just wanted to share with you some things. This channel is about growing and learning uh, different things as a reseller. And of course, as I learn, as I fail, I bring that to you guys. And that's kind of what this is, uh, this video is about. So as I mentioned, if you watch my last video, I'll put a little link up there if you have it. Uh, wait till this video is over, go back and watch it, or go back and watch it and then watch this video. Either way, um, I have been having some problems when it when it comes to sourcing, just finding something to sell. I mean, I'm running out of stuff right now, um, down to at least now three tubs and about 10 pretty big items that really don't wanna mess with, which, which I will, I'll get, I'll get them listed here. But, you know, I get kind of in a panic mode because I've never had this little of inventory. So, um, of course, you guys saw the liquidation lots that I've been working with, uh, or the lack thereof. And so today, we decided to kind of step outside of our comfort zone. And we went to a local Goodwill and you know, a lot of you guys say like the Goodwill stores are overpriced and because I don't have that experience, I can just kind of tell you that it seems like some items seem to be overpriced for, you know, the condition and what's being sold. But we went, we found some stuff and I can report to you, I went to two different Goodwills today, but we did go to two Goodwill locations. I spent a total of $129 actually $126 if I'm being exact, between two locations, nine items is what I picked up. And of course, um, did some homework. Um, of course, it's electronics. As you guys know, I like my electronics. I'm absolutely sure that I could have dove into some other sections of the store, but I wanted to get and stay within my comfort zone um, You know, to get my feet wet here. I don't wanna go just running around the store just grabbing stuff. Um, I want to go with what I feel comfortable with. And then as I get comfortable with dealing with Goodwill and other thrift stores, uh, maybe I can branch out to a couple other different niches. But uh, for me, I think this, this may just work as an alternate sourcing method. Now, um, I'm going to show you what I picked up. Like I said, I have nine items that I picked up. I'm going to share with you some screenshots of the comps that I was looking at when I made the decision to buy these. The, the couple things about Goodwill that you need to know um, from talking to the employees, they have uh, a policy where you can return within seven days uh, any electronics item if there's a problem with it, right? Because that's one of the fears that I have is you, know, you buy this item, maybe you can plug it in. And yes, you can at Goodwill, but that doesn't mean that, you know, a certain feature is maybe broken um, or something else is just wrong. You have the seven days to evaluate and of course take it back and get your money back. That's number one. Number two I didn't, uh, didn't know about Goodwill is they don't charge sales tax. So you don't need to bring your reseller certificate in there to have them waive that for you like I would normally do if I'm going to a retailer out here in Nevada. Number three, we have a lot of different Goodwills throughout Las Vegas and that's where I'm at if you guys don't didn't know that. If I go across town to one and there's, I bring it home and there's something wrong, I can go to my local one and they will accept the return. So all is good. It takes a little bit of the risk out of it. Of course, the seven days you have to be on it. You can't just buy it and let it sit. You got to be on it, right? Really didn't have a whole lot of time tonight to mess with this uh, or earlier this evening. But of course, as you're watching this, I will be working on getting these tested and of course listed. Now, um, like I said, got nine items. They're all electronics. 
and uh, I'm gonna go over each one with you. As you can see, that is pretty much the stash of stuff that I picked up. So the first thing I'm gonna show you here, and this is, Jenna picked this one out. It's a uh, Picture Mate personal photo lab. Didn't come with any chargers, but, um, and it has a proprietary charger. So I'm not going to be able to do much in the way of testing this. I can sell this for parts or repair. And if you see the, the comps that I have listed, I can do parts or repair on this and we're looking at about 40, 45 bucks. It may not have been the best buy because I really didn't take time to look at what kind of plug that was. And I don't think I have, I have like a tub of plugs. I don't think I have anything that would work. That's a proprietary plug. So again, I could take it back and say it doesn't work or I could just flip it for parts or repair, 45 bucks and I'm sure someone will grab it. The next thing, it's not too thrilling. It's this Skill Smart Charger. It's a battery charger for, you know, a, a, a tool. $1.99, now today is a purple day. Actually, this week is a purple day, which means that it's half off. So I paid a dollar for this, and as you can see, the comps on, the, on this are uh, like 13 to 20 bucks. And for $1 investment, that's easy. I could just sell that thing for 10 bucks plus uh, the cost of shipping. It's about a pound and uh, I'm sure someone will pick it up. This next item was somewhat interesting to me. It is a Optimus. It's an STA20. It's a stereo, AM FM stereo receiver. And this is kind of more along the, uh, like the vintage side of things, has the, uh, the plugs and all that. And it was $5.99. The comps on this, as you can see, on the Optimus is anywhere from 40 to 60 bucks. I did test it out and the thing sounds great. I connected it to another item that I'm gonna show you here in a bit, but uh, overall, uh, I think that's a really good purchase, even at six bucks and selling it for 40. Can't beat that, right? Next thing I picked up is really not anything to get excited about, but I figured that for the price it was $5.99, six bucks, right? So I have, like I said, I have a lot of different power connectors I can use in this thing. This thing has seen better days. You can see it. As you can see, the comps on this thing are anywhere I'd say between 25 and 50 bucks. And for a $3 investment, that's not bad. The next thing I picked up, picked up for, it was $19.99, but it's Purple Day, so it's $10, okay? And uh, this one is the Yamaha. It's a five CD player, CDC 655. And of course, powered on just fine. Um, Got to do some more extensive tests with some CDs. Um, it's kind of scratched up a little bit, but the comps on this thing are 40 to 90. So, you know, even at, at 10 bucks, if I put it up for 40 plus shipping. It's not a bad flip, I don't think. So the next thing I picked up was the Sony, it's a home theater receiver. This one was $9.99, as you can see there. And it has some, you know, has some scratches on it, which is typical for a used item. Um, it does power on, and of course I have to test it out. And this one sells anywhere from 50 to 70 bucks, as you can see in the comps. Bear with me, the items are getting pretty big. The next one is a Brother Multifunction Laser Printer. And this one's a Brother uh, MFC J650DW. And uh, looks pretty good. It powers on, fires up, uh, it has the plug. And this one, and this one was only half of 18 bucks, it was nine bucks, right? And the comps are really limited on this thing. We're talking like around 80 to 90 bucks. You know, for what I paid for it, if I put it up for 50, 60 bucks, uh, plus the cost of shipping, I'm sure someone will buy it. So the next thing I bought, and I kind of struggled with this one. It is a Thrustmaster, a Ferrari Thrustmaster steering wheel. And it comes with the pedals and we paid 20 bucks for this set. With the comps on this thing, it's anywhere from 40 to 80 bucks. 
and I kind of felt like that was sort of light. The 40 to 80 bucks, I mean, on the low side, people were selling them for like 40, 45 for just parts repair untested. These have a USB connection, so, and I have Xboxes here at the house, so I can test this out. And uh, like I said, um, I could sell it for parts to repair double my money. And you know, it has everything, it has the, the mount, and it is complete, so um, has all the proper connections and everything. So I think that's a decent flip. I mean, anytime you're at least doubling your money, I think you're okay. And the last thing I bought, and I saved it for last, it's huge. 50 bucks, comps are about one to $300, pretty wide range. It is a Danon Acoustics 5.1 home theater system. You can see, pretty heavy, but it's a solid system. And this one ran, uh, fifty dollars. It still has the Christmas wrapping paper on it, as you can see. Now, there's no way to know if it was this Christmas or last Christmas or whatever Christmas. But I opened this thing up, and it still has the internal packaging. Um, it looks like someone may have used it for a little while and just figured it wasn't what they wanted, and they just basically donated it. I've tested this out. It sounds great. If you see the comps here. It's hard to say because someone sold this set for a hundred bucks, but someone also sold it for 800. So I'm thinking it's not that crazy, but if you see the MSRP tag on this box, it's like 2,700 bucks. I'm not buying that, but based on 50 bucks, I think I can list this thing for 150 to 200 and uh, get it all day long. So what do you guys think? In for about 126, let's say 130 bucks just to make it simple. Um, if I don't triple my money, I think something's wrong. What do you guys think? How did I do? Comment down below and tell me what you guys think. How did I do? And uh, let me know if maybe you would have passed on one of these items or, you know, if you'd have looked for more. Um, it's a learning experience. And one thing I've learned about this is that yes, my go-to method of sourcing um, is liquidation. And it's probably always going to be my number one way of sourcing. It's just a lot more, a um, lot easier, less running around to do. Do it from my home. Uh, if I have a contact, I can just go to that place and I know what I'm looking for. Um, when it comes to the thrifting, you really don't have any idea what you're in store for until you get down there. It might be uh, empty. You might not really get anything uh, worth a darn. And then you might end up with quite a few items. So um, definitely going to add that to my repertoire, maybe go once a week or so. And, you know, let me know down below if, if you guys want to see me uh, do videos like this, you know, haul videos from uh, when I do go to the thrift store. I want to share that with you guys if that's something you guys want to see. So guys, one thing I learned, learn from my experience, don't put all your eggs in one basket. And that could be definitely said and holds true for your sourcing methods as well, because when that basket runs dry and uh, it may be good for you right now, you might be sourcing one way and uh, thinking that this is it, but there might come a day um, like I experienced where um, that day comes to an end. Now, I'm not saying it has come to an end for me because I'm still looking to do some uh, some sourcing through liquidation, but um, when you come to that realization that you got to make a change in your business, it's all another example of how flipping ain't easy. And I want you guys to have a great rest of your week. You may not hear from me until Monday, but just depends. We have family coming out. So if you don't hear from me, just have a great rest of your weekend and we will talk to you very soon.